through me! Enough! And that Mortal Kombat goes hard. Rated R, definitely not for kids. We're gonna discuss that. Trump wanting to fire Fauci. The United States Postal Office about to close. And also we've got Nicole Ari Parker talking like she wants to be single or close to it. We're gonna discuss it all in this video. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as we cover so many different stories. And if you have stories you want us to cover, send me a message or a DM on Instagram or follow the Facebook Life Games page. Let's take a look at what Nicole Ari Parker had to say in a recent couples therapy she did online with her husband. You know, I wish that he was my boyfriend again. I don't necessarily want to be single, but I miss the single life. I miss the text messages for no reason. Mm. I, I miss the coming up from behind me when I'm scrambling eggs and just kissing me on the back of the neck. Like, I still that do that, Boris. I still do that. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being, um, you know, general. General here, but yes. I'm just saying that the, the trapping, There's a difference. There's definitely a difference. There's the trappings of being single. Like, okay. You two are really good looking people, okay? And you're married. And 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 we're married. There's people that flirt with you. And the part of the flirtation that even makes you look at your phone is or in your in your workspace is that they have like a freshness or a newness. And I personally believe that if you're in it for the long haul, that freshness and newness is still possible if you talk about it. Be mm. like, look. I know we talk about date night. We need to go have a date night. Right. I know we talk about like kissing and texting for no reason, but the last time you texted me was over like, you know, the cabinet guy. Now folks, let me just say this. I've been married for a very long time, almost a decade. And with anything that deals with another person, it's going to take a lot of work. And in this interview, it seems like Boris Kojo completely just simply checked out as if he had nothing to say. I know some fellas are saying he looked emasculated as she went on and on and on about how she missed all these things from the single life. And he seemed like he might have even been embarrassed or, you know, maybe there was some shame. And I would be interested to know what he misses from the quote unquote single life that might not be going on in the marriage now. Ladies and gentlemen, the longer you're in a marriage, the more work it takes. There are certain things that go on in a marriage that happen in the single life that if you don't work on making those things take place, you lose them and that begins to cause problems. So all these things she's saying that she missed, maybe Boris isn't working on those, or maybe it could be the reciprocal that all the things he missed from the quote unquote single life, she's not catering to anymore. And people always say everything tends to revolve around communication in a relationship. And I can agree that it does, but what happens when you communicate these things and your spouse is not listening or they halfway listen, or there's things that's bothering you and you tell your spouse over and over again that this is what I want you to do and they're just not doing them. That's when you probably have to seek some real deal marriage counseling. And based on what she was saying, they definitely are to the point where I feel like there needs to be some professional counseling going on because my man was sitting there looking sadder than Big Bird the day they say they're gonna close Sesame Street. He didn't look happy at all. And to further elaborate on things that could possibly be going on, you have to continue to work on the things you feel like are not in a relationship. You just gotta work on those ladies and gentlemen because they're not gonna resolve themselves. So we'll follow this story to see where it goes. I hope divorce is not coming, but the way it was sitting there going down, it seems like that could definitely be something that might be on the horizon for this couple. And they've been together a very long time. They've been a beacon 
of what we would expect from a Hollywood couple because they've stay, stayed together. Things have seemed to be fine, but it seems like there's trouble in paradise going on right now. In COVID-19 news, ladies and gentlemen, we'll start with the United States Post Office first. They could pot potentially be going bankrupt, possibly be closing or having to reduce hours. And a lot of this, I feel like, is because there is an outcry from the a lot of American people and from politicians that they want the elections coming up in November to be mail-in ballot because of what's going on with COVID-19 right now. And of course, there's pushback from the White House because the president himself said, if we let everybody vote, the Republicans would never win an election. That came out of his mouth because the majority of the people are progressive, middle of the line to the left. And this is what's going on with the post office. The United States Postal Service is asking lawmakers for $89 billion to help keep them afloat, warning that it could run out of operational funds by the end of September 2020. The coronavirus pandemic led to a drastic 30% decline in mail volume just in the last week, with the service estimating a 50% drop by the end of the third quarter. Still, postal employees have continued to deliver essentials like prescriptions, mail-in ballots, ladies and gentlemen, medical supplies, more all over the country, and Democrats warned that without them, many could lose access to necessary goods. Lawmakers have been battling to agree on a relief deal, with some believing conservatives and the Trump administration are using the pandemic to force mail services toward privatization. And a lot of people have been saying they want the mail service to go private for a long time. The mail service has been around probably for before a whole lot of other things have been out here. There used to be a saying, come rain, sleet, or hail, the mail is still going to go. And that's one of our oldest, most established organizations in all the world. And I'm not surprised more Republicans aren't trying to keep it solvent or keep it open and keep it the way it is because they love tradition, they love history, and they love things that go back to the old days, except for when it's going to be something that's um, quote unquote socialized or ran by the government, but yet their current president is running the government almost into the ground. So we'll keep abreast on that story as we transition into the next crazy story from our dear leader, President Donald Trump, where on this weekend, this Easter Sunday, he retweeted something saying, fire Dr. Fauci. And I'll read it like this, ladies and gentlemen. The message refers to a CNN interview on Sunday in which Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, was asked about a report that his team pushed for earlier social distancing measures, but was rejected by the White House. Way back when they wanted to do this, when the first person hit America in Washington and the White House rejected it. It was very difficult to go back and say that, Fauci said. Then he added, I mean, obviously you could logically say that if you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation early, you could have saved many more lives. Obviously, no one is going to deny that. But what goes into those kinds of decisions is complicated. Trump last month said he and Fauci get along very well and called the highly respected infectious disease specialist extraordinary. Fauci, for his part, has defended Trump every step of the way. But I'm wondering if Fauci is starting to regret that. And everybody knows Trump likes to have the spotlight on him. And over the last couple of weeks, Dr. Fauci has been the guiding light, the backbone of America, the sounding board, the scientific resolve for helping people feel better and understand where this disease is going and how we can protect ourselves from it and get the economy going back. And Trump doesn't like that. And I'm sure Trump is not feeling how every day people are tuning in to um, Governor Cuomo more than they are him because Cuomo is going by the leadership of his doctors and scientists instead of just throwing these facades into the world about his personal feelings the way Trump is. Trump even went as far to say that his damn ratings for his briefings are higher than the Super Bowl and some other programs. Who the hell cares about that? Really? And I, I just constantly have to ask my Republican colleagues 
Is this what you want for a leader? Is this what we should be concerned about? Does this stroke you better than knowing how to get out of this? It just boggles my mind. And this just further goes to show people, you've got to get out and vote in November because we can't be dealing with this. If anything, we should be trying to say, see more of Fauci. We need to see more of Fauci than we need to see the president right now because he obviously is not leaning on the good support of the individuals trying to tell him the best ways and modalities to get us through COVID-19. And last but not least, folks, Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. You are the only hope left for Earthrealm. If Emperor Shao Kahn wins the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament, then you all die. Get over here! Man, if you guys are fans of the video game series, or if you've liked the movies, this particular one that drops from Amazon Prime is by far what video game seekers have been looking for in an animated movie. This thing had gore, it had guts, it had blood, it had all the powers and sequences of the video game into an animated series. I was sitting here watching this thing on pins and needles from the very beginning to the very end. The script was well done and they focused on Scorpion himself and they also was able to bring in all the other players, Raiden, um, Luke Cage, Johnny Kang, Jax, Sonya Blade, Katana. They brought in a lot of the characters we're used to seeing. They let them have one-on-ones within the narrative of the story of Scorpion trying to get revenge. And I'm not going to tell you what happened, but I'm sure you can figure it out amongst a tournament in which the gods proceeded over the tournament. And at the end, you're gonna see there's probably gonna be another movie because the big leader is very upset at what happened. And so ladies and gentlemen, if you are a fan of this whole entire video game series and the movies, you're gonna be very satisfied with what they done in this particular animated movie. It's rated R, so you can't watch this with the little kids. You're gonna see finales done, fatalities done, the moves from the video game. It is gonna give you pure bliss and nostalgia. Highly recommend you check this out. You can order it now or you can catch it on Amazon Prime Video. If you already got Prime, check this out. If you've seen it, let me know what you think and come back and let me know how well you feel like this followed the video game storyline after you watch it. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like this video. Please comment, subscribe. Go get yourself that life game. Please share my videos. Follow me on Instagram. If you really, really enjoy what I do, make a donation on my Patreon. It helps grow this channel. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.